Hello, Key Biscayne. It is Wednesday, February 24th, 2016, and this is the No One's Listening Show. I'm your host, Rafa. To my left is Griff. Good afternoon, Key Biscayne. To his left is Anna. Hello, hello, Key Biscayne. To her left is G-Man. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. All right. <clears throat> guys have any trivia? No. That looks like a no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of low on there. Uh, is your thing on? Is it on? Oh, it's on. You hear me now? And I hear you now. In what year was the first Key Rat Ultimate Frisbee Tournament? Ooh, that's a good one. 305-361-8557, if you know the answer to that one. 361-8557. All right, uh, we can talk. Who wants to go first? Well, how about somebody that didn't do what you and I did? Right <laughs> okay. I'll go first. Okay. Bring the mic a little closer. Sure. I'll go first. On Thursday, I'll start off there. I did this. Oh, whatever. It's not even that exciting. I went to a, I, I met a writer that did a little a little like workshop called Writing Under the Influence. And as soon as we walked in, they um, <laughs> gave us two shots of tequila <laughs> to get started. <laughs> And uh, he had some. He had two local writer friends read to us some excerpts of their writing, and, and then we had an exercise and read them amongst each other, and it was really cool. Um, and then I got really sick on Friday and never saw the world again. So you guys go ahead. That wait, wait. Like, what did you write at this thing? Uh, it's private. Since I didn't know anybody, I was able to write something that Who's I would a writer? want to share with you guys. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did you have to share it with the group over there? I did, and they liked it. They applauded and everything. Can't you like so you can share it with them, but you can't share it with your friends. <laughs> so who's wow. the writer? It's about it. Who's the writer? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was. I mean, it was. It was hosted by Soho. It was some writer that they know. I don't know. I don't know him. Neil something. I forget his name, but he's a writer and comedian, and he was really cool. Um, and then the one of the one of the writers that read first was so interesting because her story, she said that she's never written about Miami because it's just, there's too many memories and it's too much of her life for her to want to write a fiction about it. And except for this one story that she wrote, um, and from the point of view of a teenager Jewish boy living in Miami, and it was great, man. It was so great. I wish I could bring bring it and read part of it for you guys. Maybe I could try to get in touch. It was great. So how long did you have to write? They gave us uh, three by five note cards. I filled out How the much front time? and back. Oh, uh, a little while. People were chit chatting and some people were writing, so whatever. Um, but a good amount of time, like more than ten minutes. Um, and, and it was a, it, you had to write a letter to a person or an object, an angry letter. So <laughs> it was fun. Wow. Really? And everybody's yeah, was funny. Very interesting. Everybody's was comedic and like funny. And then I was like, they're like, your turn. I'm like. Mine's serious, <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "Read it," and it was it was great. It was so. Really did you? Fun. Can we ask you? Did you do it to a person or an object? A person. You did. Whoa! All right, juicy. Ooh. I did it to a person, and yeah, it was fun. That's a good trivia right there. Anybody? <laughs> anybody who was at, at that guess, event? Guess oh, who? We, guess we gotta know who this was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was great. It was really fun. Oh man. Um, but then the cough that I had. Last Wednesday on the show, it turned into this ridiculous sickness, and I missed out on the weekend. So I'll let you guys take over. I worked, and I was a wet blanket that didn't go to grassroots. Yeah. Next. I, I was going to actually ask <laughs> you, how, how come you didn't come to grassroots? Are you I, I mean, against it or something? No. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow, it's such an extreme. Such an, against uh, it for I yourself, heard... I mean? <laughs> uh, I'm not, not necessarily against it. I mean, oh, Lord. I don't know. On Saturday... I kind of just have a ritual where I, I know it sounds lame, but I just get ready for work. I had to do the shopping for 10 people and like prepare meals and stuff like that for uh, work on Sunday. So obviously I couldn't make it on Sunday either, but yeah, I just, I don't have any excuses for you. It was a great thing. So I'll make, an, I'll make it next year. Have you ever been? Yeah, I, oh, went, okay. I went last year. Oh, okay. uh, I thought it was pretty awesome. I got like the tail end of it though, and I caught some of the acts that weren't so great, but I saw some, I don't even know what the band was called, but it was pretty amazing. But I caught... On the, all the good stuff there, the one thing I'll never forget was the telekinetic rhino. <laughs> the walrus. Oh, walrus. Oh, telekinetic walrus. walrus. <laughs> I just thought, oh, all right. This is, <laughs> not everything is good here, but mostly... Well, mostly what's good. funny is that like, I've always thought that about telekinetic walrus, that they... <laughs> I mean, they, they're they performers, and they put this crazy stage show on, but I never liked the music. I didn't see them this year, but Danny, 
he had never seen them and he comes to me during the show and he's like I just saw an amazing band. I'm like, what? He's like, Telekinetic oh, no Walrus. I'm like, really? Oh. Like, you like that? He's like, yeah, man, they were awesome. I was like, really? They seem like they're just trying too hard to be the, yeah, I agree. you know, trippy. Yeah. You know, it's so, it's, it comes off as very manufactured of not very good, right? I don't know. That What's was my funny, take on it. Maybe they've gotten better. I don't know. But it's all said subjective. It was really good. You know, I'm not going to rain anybody's parade. Really good. What's funny about grassroots is that there's so much going on that you go – you have your group of friends, but you kind of each, you know, go your own way. And part of the reason is that some things that you think are good, your friend might think is cheesy as hell. And there was one point. Oh, I, I went. I lied. I went on Sunday. <laughs> that I might as well not have been there. I was so out of it. But I would look at Jonathan. I'm like, I think this is really cheesy. And he's like, me too. And we'd walk away. Like, you know, it, there are some cheesy things. And some awesome things. I'll let you guys talk about the awesome things because it was awesome. All right. We, me and Jonathan went every day. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to go every day, so I didn't get the four-day pass, and I had to end up buying tickets every day like a chump. Griff got, got, Griff got the pass, which was a good call. How much were the tickets if you bought them on a daily um, basis? It ended up costing me like 120 bucks. Okay, so 30 yeah. bucks a day? Yeah. I spent 100 for the four-day pass. Yeah, and you can get 90 with if you get in there earlier next so year. So worth it. Yeah. Yeah, 90. So I actually wrote down some of the acts that I saw that I liked. On Thursday, there was a band called Bachaco. That is, uh, it's like these Miami bands. If you've ever heard Spam or Suenalo or Locos por Juana or there's other ones out there, they all kind of have a similar sound that now is like the Miami sound, which is like a Latin Hip hoppy sound. It's it's a Latin sound, but the thing is that it's 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 uh, it's a little old now. It's already like it's from like 2008, you know, when they all made it on the scene, and they're they don't have any new stuff. Maybe you've heard it, but I haven't. Yeah, heard they it. haven't evolved as as like musicians or slowly evolved, I guess. But so this this band called Bachaco was it was refreshing to hear it was a similar sound, but but thing. Um, the Aaron Libos reality. Aaron Libos is a guy who played with Big Lou and uh, these guys at the 4th of July barbecue one year. And Lou was like, I need money. I'm not going to charge you to play the barbecue, but I need money to hire this guy because he's really, really good. And he is he really good. Yeah, he was <laughs> really good. Yeah, and at the, at the thing, he's one of these guys who just shreds like... The whole song is just him playing guitar leads. When did like, he play? Super sick. Thursday night. Thursday, Thursday night. night. And then he played with um, Suenado also in the and they put him in the back like like if he wasn't doing it because the guitar's not big in the band. But uh, that was that was good. Aaron Aaron Lebo's reality. <coughs> I missed the Magic City Hippies. Did you see them? No, you missed them. No, too. I missed them too. And so that was Thursday for me. <coughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Anna's kind of sick, so she coughs all over the it's thing. The trooper. We'll, we'll just take a little pause and let you cough it out. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. On Friday, I saw this sweet band called Kyra Ba, which was going to go down as my favorite of the thing, which was like an African-influenced band from North Carolina. They had this lead singer who was Sen Senegalese. Sen Senegalese. And he was playing this thing called a Kora, which is like, it's like a guitar, okay? in shape and that it has like a base and then a neck and strings, but the strings are made out of, um, fishing line. Mm. And, uh, the guitar part is more like a drum, like the actual, the, the body of the guitar is like a drum that sits in between his legs. And then the, the neck of the guitar kind of extends out from between his legs. So it's really phallic, this whole thing. <laughs> and he's sitting there and he's like, you know, jumping around playing this thing. And, and it, it plays almost like a harp. You got to look it up, K O R A, just to get what I'm talking about. But the sound was really cool. I'd heard it before uh, from Little Big Planet, and I looked up the guy in <laughs> that's where that place. You heard it? Yeah, I was like, well, I know I've heard this sound before. Like, that's where so where's this sound? I told the guy, I was like, I heard this on a video game soundtrack one time. And then I came back the next day, and he was playing the next day, and I was like, I know the artist's name. The guy's name is. Uh, um, something diabate and i and the guy was like yeah that guy's like the best that this that ever happened i was like oh yeah so i had heard it and it was, it's just a cool sound a cool like african inspired sound and cool band um 
Then on Saturday, I saw Blue Jay, which is a Miami band that I really liked. Three three piece, uh, two brothers and a friend. And uh, that was cool. I'll talk to you more about that in a bit. Catchy Shuby, me and Jonathan both saw it, which is like a soul band from Miami. I really liked it. You didn't like it as much, right? It was good, but the thing is that my first impression of the guy, of the lead singer, um, I was actually going to the bathroom, and I see some, like, you know, chubby Mexican-looking dude, you know, dressing up, uh, like, in, in the 70s clothes, and I was like, man, this is weird. What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> you know, and I get out of the bathroom, and little do I know, he's he's a lead singer for the band. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he was good. He had, like, a James Brown feel. Um he did, he did good. I, you know, I, I read his bio, and he's been he's been doing this for quite some time. Is he from Miami? Yeah, they're from Miami. Because you said I got videos from you guys, or saw some on Snapchat, and that was one of my favorites. I liked it a lot. Yeah, the fact yeah. that we can go watch this band any like whenever they play here is gonna yeah. be cool. Cool. So that, that was catchy Shuby. Um, then you want to talk about Family Stone <laughs> and Charles Bradley? I know you liked Family Stone, right? Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Um. So yeah, my my big thing this this grassroots was seen Saturday night. Uh, Charles Bradley um, and the Extraordinaries. So he's an older man, um, and he has a, also the James Brown feel. It's soul music. It's great. You should check him out on YouTube. Highly recommend it. Um, and then the big act was the Family Stone. Obviously Sly wasn't there, uh, but his daughter was, and it was great. I mean the the sound quality was amazing. Um, yeah, the way they ripped the guitars, the basses, and the, the guitars was it was great. And yeah, the guy who, who fronted the band was good. He was yeah. He sounded. He even looked dirty. like Sly. Yeah, he even looked like Sly. Even I was though he's not even related. Yeah, I, I was surprised. That he, I thought he was going to be like an old a family member That's or what something. I thought. And then he was like, nah, no, like I got nothing to do. But <laughs> I look but, like the guy and I sing like the guy. So it was great. They played all the classics, and uh, it was for me the best sounding uh, band of the whole festival. Nice. Then on Sunday, saw Juke. They put on a good show. I really enjoyed that. Right? I really enjoyed that. Juke is a good band. and uh, They jammed out. Yeah, they play all over Miami, so you can catch them out there. Um, the only thing, I've, I mean, I've said it before, they play at Blackbird too often, and I hate that venue. I don't I don't. I like the venue. I just don't like the people that go to the venue to watch the band, because they're not there to watch the band, so they don't care. Yeah, so sucks. it's like... It's like, dude, this guy's shredding right now, right in front of your face, and you don't even, you're not even paying attention, you know what I mean? Yeah, to give people an idea, Juke is, the lead singer has a harmonica pretty much taped to his mouth the majority <laughs> of the time, and he's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, watch them on YouTube as well. Yeah. Uh, then we saw the Wood Brothers, which was uh, highly recommended was by good. MP on the website. Thank you for that. And then I asked the guy, um, Fortage, Matt Fortage, is that his name? Yes. I asked him at uh, at Wet Lab on Friday if he was going to go to the grassroots, and I was like, yeah, there's this, he's like, maybe on Sunday, I was like, yeah, there's this band called the Wood Brothers that was recommended. He's like, yeah, I've seen them ten times. They're awesome. Go, you, you got to see them. I was like, okay. And we went, and it, they were pro. They Those were guys so, were awesome. Yeah, they were it was really awesome. good. Um, and then <clears throat> I went to a drum circle, and... I came that? begin. It was like in the corner. There was a little fire in the yeah. deep corner of the festival. In the woods. And, yeah, and, and these guys playing a drum circle. What? <laughs> it's just funny that you mentioned yeah. it, the drum circle because my <laughs> wife actually got invited to the drum circle. And um, she had left and she's like, oh, I bet you're going to go to the drum circle. And I actually went and it was to the tip. And when I got there, they hadn't really started. And it was like a big cello. And about every about like eight people with drums, so it's funny that I went by myself and you ended up going. <laughs> and Jonathan uh, is looking at me because he comes back from it and he was like, "Yeah, I was just at this drum circle," <laughs> and I was like, "I don't even know at that point where what was happening," but I didn't, I don't know. But Jonathan, we're, we're laughing about the I drum circle. I, I, so it's funny, funny that you went. went. Yeah. Your own experience with so, it. My, but my experience was this: the drum circle guys were like very exclusionary not only that they were like they were, we, they were weird they first of all they that's were like, not cool for a drum circle right? that's like the whole point of a drum circle yeah but they were all like you know we're the drummers here <laughs> like you know and doing that sounds, and like, an, thing, sounds like an 80s the other movie. thing they did which was not <clears throat> cool it's like they were way too close to the main stage 
but they were playing different beats from the main stage. So you could hear the drum from the main stage. You could hear what they were playing. And then one of their friends had his car parked, and he was playing something else out of that thing. Oh, so it was lame. Like, this is, what is playing music out of his car stereo and <laughs> yeah. grassroots? At first they were they were playing along with the car, but then they were like, we don't want to play with the car either. That's so lame. like three different things going on. I'm thinking, these guys are a bunch of kooks. Worst drum circle. <laughs> <laughs> Stoner bashing time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was funny. That is funny. Um, any other little adventures out there? Let me think. I had a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, living on the edge. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, there's free water. I think that's fantastic. There is? Yeah, because I was only drinking water for most of the thing, and it was free water. I, like, lived at the free water station. It was amazing. That is nice. Oh, you know who sponsored the free water? I actually wanted to make a little mention on it on the radio of it on the radio. It was the Rhythm Foundation. So thank you, <laughs> Rhythm Foundation, for the free water. All right. Yeah. Uh, what else? Anything else that was like really get into it? I know I danced a lot. I know I uh, with, with some of those bands that I mentioned. Wood Brothers was my last enjoyable moment, and then it went downhill for me. <laughs> I think it's just the whole idea of going so many days. Um, yeah, it's rough. You know, I did the four-day pass, and I was there from Thursday in the afternoon. Um, I didn't go in the mornings, but I would definitely go <coughs> after like three or two. Um, but, yeah, in general, it's worth it. It's in your backyard. Yeah. Uh, it's also good to see since the the whole organization that brings this festival down, they did start in New York. They also have one in uh, North Carolina. So they also bring a lot of people that, that travel with them, a lot of volunteers. So it's good to see a different culture. Yeah. And culture, I mean a bunch of hippies. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was good. <laughs> um, and it was funny because they're all goofy. Um, and I say that with confidence. Uh, but it was good. <laughs> it was good. Um, I thought you were going to say something else. With love, maybe. No, I definitely wasn't. <laughs> right, but in general, love. it was great. Uh, it's really well organized, I thought, this year. Uh, like, it has been the last three yeah. four years. It's very comfortable to go in and out. Yeah. Just to do everything you want to do. And you can take your kids. You know, I had a lot of friends of ours that had kids. Yeah, like and they would bring them during the day, put them on a blanket. They all had a great time. There's yeah. even a kid's zone or something. Yeah. They have a playground. Yeah, like a they daycare even. Um... And then the other thing I wanted to mention, I know the bands really like the festival because the festival goes out of their way to take the best bands to the other festivals that they have. So, they, you know, it's not just like come to this festival. If, you, if you're good and they like you, they, they hire you to go to the other ones. And that's big for these bands that are really local. And then yeah. they get that exposure of going to another big festival in a place, uh, uh, you know. But, but, but real grassroots there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess that was the weekend. Yeah, that was a weekend. It was uh, a good weekend. Let's talk about Monday for a second. Oh, yeah. Rat Radio Softball winning in the playoffs against the Narwhal team 9-7. to seven. Oh, yeah. 9-7. Yeah. to seven. Gannon pitching the slow-pitch softball equivalent of a no-hitter. <laughs> <laughs> just, the pitching was on and the fielding was on. We came together as a team on Monday. It was great. Yeah. I was... mean, we, you know, we just organized a little bit better, and we got good results, and we still only won by two two runs. But so that means we play this upcoming Monday at 7 p.m. against the number one ranked team, which is going to be, should be interesting. But I think we can, I think we got a shot at it. Um, so. Yeah, so for anybody who wants to come watch, the finals are actually next Monday. At seven o'clock, uh, starts the. It's a double header, which I think is rough, but I guess that's how it has to be. Um, so semifinals are played, and then the finals. Um, it should it should be a lot of fun because everybody's out there. It's yeah. the last day, the last day of the season. Like you everything. say, the only unfortunate thing is both of the semifinal games are going to happen at the same time, so that kind of splits the crowd. You know, splits the fun, splits the crowd a little bit. It'd be best if they just played it all on that beach side. Uh, field there where everybody yeah. gets super fired up because that other field by the causeway it's you just feel like you're playing for nobody there yeah and that game that played after us after we beat the narwhals it was the key rats versus the backdoor sliders which is harry michel's team um with a bunch of other younger guys that was a great game to watch that was like the most fun i ever had watching slow pitch softball because <laughs> it just had a lot of energy and it was good that's a brand new team i definitely think uh on monday what was exciting uh was the reason why we, I think we won, and I mean we as Rat Radio, is because of Austin. 
and his home run. <laughs> uh, so yeah, think, yeah, he's clutch. He was clutch. Man, that was a, that <laughs> was a big and, home run. And what was also funny was the backdoor sliders, uh, Michael Kelly. Oh, yeah, that guy was a beast. He was a beast. This yeah. guy is like five foot, what, eight? <laughs> five foot. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, he's like five foot eight. And this guy's all over the place. And he did great. He made a diving catch at shortstop, which I've never seen before. Yeah, that was, that was pretty awesome. Just great stops. I mean, that team was just. They, they can be a little rough around the edges, that team, sometimes. Cause some, yeah. Sometimes they show up drunk and get a little unruly. But it was all spirit that game. So that was nice. There was a there was a point where he where he, he stole a base which he oh, which yeah. was really oh, that risky. Was insane. That was insane. And they made an error and it was like stealing from first to second. They made an error and they he almost took caught it, him. And he took it all the way home from yeah. there. It was yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> it was just ridiculous to watch because you were like, oh, what a bad move doing that first yeah. to second. And then it, well, it turned it into a home run. To uh, bring Austin back into it, Austin made an ill advised uh, run to second, which just happened to work out for him. I mean, <laughs> the game could have gone either way for us because we had a lot of crazy stuff like that, that that happened. But overall, it was a great time, and I hope the, the semis are just as fun. The yeah. team we're playing is kind of – they're not really known for their spirit, but we'll still have a good time. So the team that we're playing next week is um, the, the Champs. The Champs, they call themselves. You know, the oh. Champs. That's their name? Yeah. That's so lame. They wanted to call themselves Sons of Pitches, but that unoriginal name was already taken by, <laughs> by another team. Uh, we actually talked to one of their players who was uh, who was saying that... that Oh, uh, Inside Scoop. Yeah, Inside Scoop. He was <laughs> saying how much he wanted to leave their team because yeah. even though they're good, they got no soul. They got no soul. Who was it? Uh, oh. can't say, can't say, <laughs> say it next week after the season's over. <laughs> Um, Champs. Just a, just another one from that team trying to jump on the rat radio train. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We we got a full roster though. It's, it's it's tight. You know I've never been out there to see you guys. Oh yeah, it's a great time. Shame. It's a good time. Yeah, it's Shame. A, it's I a don't good know. Time. Another time to come out on Monday. It'll be good. And that goes for all the listeners too. Oh, it's, go a on great, it's a great time. Brandon Park. They you know they kind of leave you alone there. You can have a beer and watch baseball. I mean, what else do you want? And I always went to support the Frisbee, so I'm surprised I've never been to the softball. We have Frisbee to talk about, too, but we can maybe that'll be later on in the show. Yeah, it'll be later. All right. Um, so it's uh, Wednesday, February 24th, 2016. This is the No One's Listening show, Key Biscayne. And um, the trivia was, uh, when was the first uh, Frisbee tournament, ultimate Frisbee? Yeah, Key Rat ultimate Frisbee. Key Rat Ultimate Frisbee no, it's Tournament. Not, it, it's not, it wasn't called the Key Rat Summer Tournament at that time. That's oh. a little clue. Oh. 305 <coughs> Or if you just want to talk. You know, just let us know. We need our get our Nielsen ratings in here. It's yeah. the, <laughs> the only way we can gauge how many people are listening. Yeah, give us a call. Give us a uh, give us a text to that number. 361-8557. Moving on, what are you listening to? Ooh, that's a good one. What have I been listening to? Charles Bradley. <laughs> oh. Um, before, yeah, obviously I, I hyped myself up to see him on Saturday, so uh, I, I, I saw him on YouTube. Okay, so this is why you were kind of... Uh, pushing it. No, not just pushing it, but you were, you were a little let down because it didn't sound like the album. I mean, the you guy's know, a lot older than when he recorded the record. He's He's from Gainesville. Uh, you know, he hit it big when he was older but no yeah i mean i guess the sound could have i imagine the stage presence to be a little bit more professional really but it but i guess it added to the the charm uh but yeah i thought it was good it didn't blow me out of the water but uh, it's, it was good i thought he was good i mean he, I, I mean he had a good presence and he was his band was, was phenomenal yeah his band was great um and he he had the costumes and stuff and he was you know he was real yeah. emotional for some of the stuff Who's I with? Uh, yeah. Somebody was like, man, that really hit me hard when he sang the song about his mom and stuff like that. Yeah. And then he sang this other song that was like Hard Times in America or How Hard. How well, hard. well, my, my song of the week is Why Is It So Hard? Yeah. And it <laughs> talks one. about how hard it is to, to make it in America. <laughs> so, that yeah, that's my that, song for the that's week. That's a good one. Now, I remember thinking that was the best one. I was like, that was good. Put cool. it on the radio. It'll happen, It'll happen. eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, I've been. I felt like the the mix has been pretty fresh, but maybe it's just my imagination. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, definitely it has is. been. <laughs> All right. All right. Anna's next. Anna's next. Um, my song is uh, 
Bobby Bland, I'll Take Care of You, from 1959. Is it Bland? No, it's so good, man. It's, uh, there's these kind of, it's 1959, but it sounds so Doorsy. And uh, it's just so good. I heard it. I have to give you a little context. I've been watching this new series on HBO called Vinyl. Has anybody heard of it or read it? Heard or of it. Seen it? I haven't seen it. It's pretty freaking cool. Okay. The pilot was two hours long. It's like, it feels like a movie. And then I'm on, episode two happened last Sunday. I've been watching a lot of TV lately because yep. I'm sick. But um, And there's just really good music in it. It's about the 70s, but they do flashbacks to like late 50s, early 60s and stuff like that. And one of the flashbacks was this Bobby Bland situation, like a uh, uh, reenactment of Bobby Bland. So it's more like the doors. Scene. It's not like Beady Boppy. You know, it's like not Beady Boppy. It's like Etta James does a cover for you have to get an idea. Okay. So it's like that kind of feel, but with like uh, organ. What? Organs? It's freaking good. Love them. Yeah. Nice. Oregon? Is that what was Dorsey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, yes, please. Bobby Bland, I'll take care of you. Definitely. Cool. Gonna hear that one. You're gonna like it. All right. I, I have a few recommendations. Uh, they're not really groundbreaking, but I think they'd be good on the radio. I've also been listening to the radio a lot, and I have a few that I think we should take off the radio. But oh, maybe yeah. we can figure that out after the show. <laughs> <clears throat> Just ones I keep hearing over and over again. Yeah. Oh. I want to take them all off, but keep going. <laughs> Uh, I want Ray Charles, What I Say, Ooh. on there. I want Violent Femmes, Blister in the Sun, and Jimi Hendrix, Little Wing. All right. So. Nice. Look at our vibe tonight. It's ah, good stuff. What's up? Uh, my recommendation is a band that I heard at Grassroots. Wait, wait, wait. It's not David Bowie? No. I've cool. David, David Bowie was last week. And yeah, so but, next you know, week it's again. been like a month. I figured maybe you're going to have another one, but... Next That's week I'll have every next other week, week I'll do some Bowie. It's Don't a good worry. surprise. I know you love it, so I'm gonna <laughs> keep uh, I'm giving you the box set for your birthday. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, no, it's this band that I saw on Saturday at, at Grassroots. They're from Miami, and they're called Blue Jay. I told you, and the song's called Burning Soul, and it starts one way and it ends another. It's it's like a six minute song, and it was really cool. I can't wait to catch this band uh, again. The band is like acoustic-y. I mean, they all, they all play acoustic, but some of the songs get up-tempo, and now they're even doing some other stuff. They were saying, like, since they were living in Tallahassee for a while, um, coming back to Miami, they're, they're now, like, incorporating some more electronic sound into, the, into what was a folksy band, which is fine. I mean, you know, it's what it is. The, the show is so good that, I mean... It, but the song I want to recommend is called Burning Soul, so check it out. Either that or Lucy, but Burning Soul. Lucy's a cool song because in the middle of it, he plays uh, Everything in Its Right Place by, by Radiohead, just for a second, and only on the live cut. So anyway, Burning nice. Soul by Blue Jay. That's what you're listening to, or what we're listening to. <laughs> <laughs> and now we go to the uh, talk of the oh, town. No. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, no. All right, let's start with some announcements. Uh, Frisbee, Frisbee. All right. Oh, I wasn't prepared for this. Hold on. Let me turn to my page here. <laughs> so we have. I don't want to give away the trivia, but the something annual Key Rat <laughs> Ultimate Summer <laughs> Tournament <laughs> is happening. <laughs> And I set up some dates. I'll just say it's the better part of a decade. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have some dates. I haven't sent out the email yet. Um, the di main difference this year is it's going to be put on by my club, Rafa's club, Griff's club. Me and Griff are both sporting our club shirts tonight. That's <laughs> right. Represent. I was scolded earlier by another club member for doing work in it. He says it's just for display purposes. But I said I have two. I have one for working and one for the, you know, for the bright whites for the events. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so it's going to be through the Calusa Club, which is great because that way we can front the money for a lot of these things we want to do. Like we're going to get custom disc grab discs this year, which has been a major complaint amongst, amongst like Frisbee aficionados. Yeah, can you explain that for a second? Okay, so <laughs> I, we've, for two years now, the last two years, Ralph has made awesome designs and we've gone through, we've put them on Innova discs, which are a type of a disc that you play Ultimate Frisbee with but they're not the preferred disc. 
the preferred disc is Discraft, and Discraft has a little bit more stringent order restrictions and stuff like that, and that's why we stayed away from them. But nobody uses the, the disc that we give out in the tournament because they're just not... People look at them and they say, this feels wrong, and they just like... And I think they just don't want to use it, too, because they like the... You know, they don't want to ruin it, but I think it's mostly just the fact that it's not Discraft, because I haven't seen any of those in circulation since we gave them out. Yeah. <laughs> they did not make appearances for one reason or another. So we're going to get Discraft this year. I'm sure it's going to be a, a great design. Roth will put it together as always. We're looking at a, a foil of some kind. Yeah. Which is pretty exciting for people who <laughs> know about Frisbees. <laughs> and Discraft's real deal. Anyways, and you're also going to get uh, your, your uniform paid for with your payment to Calusa Club. So we are raising the, the price a little bit. Last year I looked it up. It was $25. This year I'm looking at 40 And 10 of that is going to go straight to your captain for the uniforms. So I don't think that's a bad deal. Do you no. guys think that's bad? No, not I don't at all. No, okay. that sounds good. Trying to get six teams. We have six captains signed up so far. <clears throat> so uh, it's going to be Grant, Harry, Derek Cardenas, Anthony Fuentes, Alex Rivera, and uh, Juan Paz. So it's all new guys pretty much except for the grandfather who wants to defend his title. <laughs> I mean, he's really, everybody else is like, well, I don't really want to be a captain. I gave up being a captain this year. Grant, he wants to defend his title, so... That's awesome. He's a he's a guy to beat. That's for sure. All right, the dates. The first game is going to be on April 10th, and that regular season is going to run until May 15th, and the whole thing is going to wrap up on a Saturday, which is June 11th. Okay. Usually we play the games on Sundays. All the games are on Sundays except for the final. So mark your calendar. I'll be sending out an email soon to everybody, and it's going to be great. We got the Key Rat Cup. It's on display in the community center there. Have your name on the cup. I don't even have my name on the cup, and I started the tournament. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's why I'm stepping down from captain. Maybe I can make it onto the cup as a player. So I'm excited about that. I was thinking about putting like a commissioner plate on there. Like, I don't know. It did bother me a little. Like Grant's name's on there like five, you know, <laughs> many times. Get Grant to pick you, man. That's the other controversy brewing. Everybody wants to like manipulate the tournament to beat Grant, you know, because Grant's so good. He is. It's so been good. A, it's been a real problem. He keeps winning. Anyways, <laughs> hope to see you guys out there. It's going to be played at Mass Field. And, how do they uh, uh, find oh, out oh, about I'm this? Sorry, I'm sorry. How, One, do they, how do they look this up? How do they look it up? Call Gannon. If you're listening to this, you probably know who Gannon is. <laughs> or Rafa, any Calusa Club member. Uh, you can get at me at 305-321-9571. I won't be offended if you text me in the middle of the night. As long as it's about the Frisbee tournament, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then one more, one more thing about the Frisbee. The draft, which is my favorite part of the whole tournament, <laughs> because you get to see where you stack up in the grand scheme of things. And people like me and Kiki are, now that we're not captains, we have to actually see where we go in the free market of the draft. Ooh. Did you see the, the grant scheme of things? The, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The grant scheme of things. <laughs> oh, man. That, that picture of the Islander I was looking at the other day is great from last year. <laughs> Anyways, we're doing the draft at Andy's Cottage and the Roads. And that's going to be on March 22nd, which is a Tuesday. So come by after work. Everybody's welcome. Um, obviously, this is all going to go out in email. And if you have ever held a Frisbee and I've seen you before, you're going to be getting this email. So <laughs> get excited. It's going to be great. It's going to be hot as hell. People are going to be hurting of heat stroke out there. There's going to be arguments on the field. Broken toes. It's going to be hot. It's going to be great. I'll see you out there. Go Calusa Club. All right. You can also look it up on Facebook, Calusa Club Facebook. Uh, oh, just send a message sorry, right yes, there. Right. Facebook page, I forgot we had that. Yeah, just send a message there if you're interested. That's, um, that's a grandfather's deal. Get in quick because uh, <laughs> these spots go fast. All right, what else we got? Are you playing this year, Rafa? <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'll be at all the events. They're fun. Yeah. I, I love going to them. Um, I'll make an announcement and give you guys a little... A little dirt, but it's not really dirt. It's just an announcement. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, Fourth of July parade. It's my big thing. Uh, one of my big things. Um, yeah, we meet every third Thursday of the month at 6:45 in the Rec Center. If you want to join or help us out. So I, I mentioned this last week, and then I had the meeting the next day, and we get to the meeting, and three of the most prominent members of the committee. <clears throat> People who did a lot of work and led a lot of the the subcommittee, led on on some of the bigger tasks on the uh, that we have to do, retired, and so they're not going to be there this year. And I am looking for 
young strapping Key Biscayners uh, who are ready to take charge of a couple things. It really isn't that much work. It's a good time. If you're interested, uh, you know, call me right now, 305-361-8557. Send a text or find us on Facebook or on the website or... What's the website? KB4.org. It's probably out of date because I haven't updated it since last year. Did Donald Trump take it over? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So reach out if you've ever thought of doing any type of cool service. Uh, Griff's on there with me, and we always have a good time, even at the meetings and everything. They're real laid back. It's almost like being on the radio show, but without a radio. So, where are the meetings? Are the meetings still at the community center? Yeah, community center, <laughs> third Thursday of the month at 6:45. Keep it in mind. I think also, it's a it's a good way to contribute just in a small way. It's essential. Yeah, and meet, look, at, look at Austin. Austin has committed really he's signed an unwritten contract to to be at the 4th of July for the next 25 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least we hope yeah. so. You know, Hopefully it's 25 years. Yeah, but, but that is kind of the deal, mm-hmm. you know? That's a pretty big deal. So good. for somebody just to step up and join the parade committee, it's a really unique, awesome thing. I mean, I have memories of doing it with my my dad setting up the barricades, and it's just a really cool thing to be a part of. And to see Rafa on parade day running around <laughs> with his radio, I was the chauffeur last year. <laughs> but that leads into the other thing is our club is going to be putting together our parade entry this year. So that's another thing we have going on. That's the only reason I'm not a little bit more active, and I know I'm, that's what I'm going to be doing on the 4th of July. Yeah, exactly. If not, I mean, I already told you guys this. I would try and get people from the Calusa Club, but the Calusa Club yeah. members have to put together a float, and so that doesn't make sense. So I need other people who are not in the Calusa Club to help us out. So if you're, if you've ever thought about it, it's a really good time. You guys Please drink beers me. at the meetings? Yeah. All right. And there's food. <clears throat> Um, okay. So. <laughs> We're moving on to the controversial stuff now? Yeah, but it's boring, man. Yeah, it is. More, it, there's not much to say about it, right? Uh, so, here's what I wrote down. It's all boat show related. Boo. Boo. It's boring. boring. Um, so, the Mast, uh, the Mast Academy PTA, they, uh... <laughs> They wanted to out- so so they sent out a little recap letter to PTA members about their weekend after the uh, after the boat show like their boat show weekend and and what happened. So the PTA they wanted to offer parking for money at the boat show. That was their big plan. Like, hey, we'll make some money with these guys here. And apparently the village uh, reached out to them and said, hey, you know these guys are doing this event. It's a disaster. Get it. We don't want it. You shouldn't want it either. Stop trying to like make a quick buck here, and don't tailor to to help these guys out. So, uh, you know, the PTA didn't uh, didn't agree, and the key posted a police officer to not allow parking on a lot that was adjacent to the field, to the Mast Academy field. And that's because the key has a certain jurisdiction over that field because of a shared agreement with the thing. So they were like, well, let's make sure that nobody actually parks there because we can make sure that nobody parks there. But Mast has a lot of parking either way, so these people made uh, still made their parking thing. But they were mad at, at the key, and the key was kind of upset with them. But then they were also mad at the boat show because the boat show didn't want them to offer parking either because the boat show was worried that even though they only had limited parking there on Virginia Key, that they weren't going to fill up their parking. And if somebody else was offering parking, uh, that that would happen. And then there was some apparently on the Thursday before the boat show, that first day, there was it was really kind of messy coming onto the key and then they kind of resolved it. But they resolved it by putting a sign that says no parking on Virginia Key. And so the mass people are like, man, they put up that sign, and that really screwed us, or whatever. And so they sent out this thing, like, crapping on the key. But then at the end of the message, for all that that, that went down and all these problems that they purported to have, they made $36,000 Wow! <laughs> in a weekend selling parking for the boat show. So I want to know, should the PTA have taken the key's position or not or are they be, like what i'm asking is are they being a bunch of scabs 
by breaking the the strike, or or are they just doing their thing as uh, good opportunists? I think it's I think it's if if yeah if the the opportunity arises, why not? You know, um, I think it's well, good for for PTA. I mean, they they just paid thirty six thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, Rob's just trying to make the argument like the key's doing all this stuff kind of in a symbolic protest against uh, the bocho and. Are these people doing wrong to that? I don't think a lot of them really care, you know, unless they're from the key. <clears throat> yeah, obviously they you do. Know? I mean, do, do they, are they, like, morally wrong? No. I mean, what's wrong with offering somebody a place to park? Hey, money towards education is always a positive. Let's, you know, be cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, so honestly, I think how that stuff should work is it shouldn't be up to, like, a PTA or something. I think it should just be the parking is there and it's – rented out by the event and the money goes to the Dade County schools in general, not the PTA of mass necessarily. I think that resource should just be utilized for the good of all schools, not the PTA being opportunist. I think that's pretty cool that they did that, <laughs> but I don't think that's the way yeah, it should that makes, work. That like, definitely makes more sense. It's all the same system. It yeah. should just be, this is a resource. Let's use it. Let's pay you to use it. No, nope, let's not get all political about it with all these PTA people and their angry letters. I mean, yeah. I, saw, I read that thing and I, uh, that, I guess that was a letter through Facebook or something. I don't know. I saw it in our message. <coughs> and, I mean, it made some good points. It really do make the key look like a bunch of uh, killjoys that just don't care about anybody but themselves. But that's not necessarily it. Like we were talking about before the show, you have to kind of fight these things. It is a slippery slope, and you have to represent your interest early on, you know? So, so But uh, sorry if that's a lengthy answer. But no, I think, I'm but what, Doing what they did, I don't think that's what they did was wrong at all. I just think... That the system al- that allows that shouldn't it shouldn't be that way. I think it's just be we rent out your your parking spot and then we use our guys to park people and that's it. Yeah, like black that, and white. Yeah, that, yeah, that would have been that would have made that way more it sense. takes the politics out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for giving me an answer to something that I thought was super boring. Um, <laughs> so the other thing that happened was this, this letter to the editor that we just read um, by a Mr. Gottlieb. I think Gottlieb, it, I think it is. Yeah. And he wrote to the Islanders saying, what a waste of money, the fight against the boat show. The boat show was fine. And then he went off on on the problems of traffic and density and all these things are, have nothing to do with the boat show. And they have to do with other policies that the key has allowed to – or non-policies which have allowed the key to grow to a certain extent. And that's what causes a certain amount of traffic. And to him, I just say, you're right that the key could tackle these other things, and I wish they did. But the boat show fight was a good fight, and it's still I think it's still a good fight to fight every fight that will bring more to the key. And it's easy to fight these because they're external, and it's a lot harder to fight the ones that are internal because people are like the guy suggests banning all cars as opposed like yeah. if that's gonna happen. That's where he kind of yeah. lost me. Yeah, that. that's I where he kind of lost me on that level. Obviously, that's that's extreme, but uh, you know that's a fight that the key would never pick or even anything close to it. You can't even get people like you can't get the key to. Um, except smaller houses or anything like that or, or limits on – it's very hard to limit I mean, he has a very valid that. point that the key's not doing a whole lot internally to, <clears throat> to limit the traffic volume and stuff like that. Exactly. And then they're trying to extend their power into an area that doesn't even belong to them. Yeah. So he has a pretty valid that, argument there. But yeah, like, that's, a, that's a decent argument. But that, I don't know. You don't have to pick one or the other. You know what I mean? Correct. I agree. Yeah. So to Mr. Gottlieb, well, you know, at least they're fighting something. Um, you know, it's funny just thinking about that and, and his answer to density and stuff like that. My opinions have changed somewhat on, on development and density. And I've be, I mean, I've already expressed this to you guys a little bit, but I've started to think that the only answer is to allow development. Not development, not completely unfettered, but you want you want to make sure that things kind of go in a in a in a way that that will make for a better city, like uh, going up. But the idea of cutting off uh, density 
only serves people who own. It really only serves owners. That's it. Everybody who rents gets screwed, and everybody who doesn't own or wants to come in gets screwed too. And basically, I get screwed. So I have changed my position, and now it is, hell, allow four-story buildings all over the key. I don't care. It would be better. It would be better for me, and it would be better. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? I mean, it's easy wow. from... <laughs> I mean, from our both of our perspective, uh, both of our perspectives are kind of similar. I mean, we don't re- aren't likely to be living in the the house residential part of this <coughs> game, so yeah. So it's very what you're expressing is very you know your personal interest of the way things should be. <clears throat> Although when I when I'm an old man, I come back to the key and wherever from wherever I'm able to afford living, <laughs> and I see the key being like a bunch of you know four-story townhouse developments all over, I'd probably be pretty heartbroken. Right, but... (laughs) But Would it it make it more possible for me to live on the key? Yes, it would. Wait, but the the people who come back, your parents' generation, all those people... They probably think the same thing. They think the same thing already. (laughs) So, I mean, you're not really... You're not helping anybody, it seems. I don't know, Ross. I'm too sick to argue this one. (laughs) Well, I mean, look at Miami Beach. That's pretty much what you're describing. A lot of Miami Beach is the residential area is that. It's apartment buildings that are tall. I don't know yeah. if that's exactly what you're talking about. You're talking well, about the, the, just houses that actually, are Actually, Miami stories? Beach has a, a, has a different problem. Actually, this kind of came to me today because I was reading about their uh, code says they can't build over 50 feet in a lot of the right, areas. Right. And obviously, like, a lot of people... And now rents in Miami Beach are out of control, you know, yeah. and housing prices. But there's still a lot of dense development and pretty low-cost rentals in Miami Beach... They're not low no. cost, though. I There's some say pretty they're... cruddy buildings there. I don't yeah, know. I've never, I've never looked expensive. into that market. They're, they're, they're expensive. They're expensive, yeah. yeah you know what? They... Those apartments are really big, too. They're like these old cruddy apartments, but they were built in a time where apartments were a little bit I would o- just, more yeah. open. Oh, but yeah? A lot of them are. The ones I've, all the cruddy sure. old ones I've been to are and all they had cool. a breeze coming through there. Yeah. Um, I would just say, say beware. I mean, Miami Beach is a nightmare. The traffic is terrible. <laughs> it's it's really a citywide thing that there's a lack of housing in in what is city of Miami and and Not, a couple other places. Uh, no that, lack that of housing you, in Brickell. The, the key is what we yeah, love. There is. There is. The yeah. There's, How? Everything's full. Brickell sucks. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's and everything's full. Maybe when these buildings go online, like. You know, they finish them, <coughs> then things will start plateauing a little bit. <coughs> oh my god, so sorry. Don't worry. Oh god. But maybe when these things go online, these things will start plateauing. But for now, everything's there's a lack of housing, and so that's where where kind of my opinion's coming from. It's like the the answer to high rents is more housing, or high price uh, houses is more housing. You know. Yeah, and but then that's gonna happen again later. Yeah, of course. It's an island. Look, Rob, so, I think your no. idea is horrible. Yeah, horrible. Yeah, you're wrong. You're I'm an sorry. Owner. It's not even that. It's just that, like, why would I even want to continue living here if it's – look, there's already enough traffic coming into the key at 8.30 to 9 in the morning, you know, in the afternoon to go towards 7-Eleven, get all the traffic from St. Agnes. I mean, it's already getting pretty populated, and if it gets – if you build more and do more, it becomes less desirable to live here. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think, you know, Cuba Skin is going to maintain its, its exclusiveness. Uh, so, I, you know, yeah, it's not a the, fan it's of your It's in idea. the general interest of people on property no, out here. not a fan of your to idea. Keep, yeah, to no, keep the status quo. It's yeah. Just, the, the Rob status... is just expressing what he thinks would be great for him. Yeah. And me, too. Yeah. Well, maybe, to fix, maybe, maybe not full-blown development. And fix the high prices, basically. Yeah. But um, you know, then there's the idea that, like, you know, that traffic... Yeah, you would still have the traffic problems. Um, that's definitely a thing. Um, but you could build things so you wouldn't have to go off the key as often, basically. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't know. It's, I don't know how you would do it, you know, because it would it would be something else to, like, rezone things to be... Yeah, you know, four-story condos with with uh, yeah. with with mixed use on the bottom, but I think it would make for a cool little town. I don't know, a bustling little town. <laughs> you, you just gave up on the island paradise and yeah, went straight he just to the town. Completely gave up. I think he just gave up. To, well, I, I already gave I gave up because I already think we're already living in that little 
We already are. It, city we're, town. Yeah, thing. city town thing. You know. Um, maybe beach. So now I'm like, mm, maybe make it a make make, make it, it full fledged that. So yeah. The advantages of that. Exactly. Gotcha. Anyway. It is uh, 7.20 p.m. on this uh, Wednesday, Good February 24th, 2016. It's the No One's Listening Show. Keep us game. 305-361-8557 if you have the answer to this trivia question. When was the first Key Rat Key Wide Ultimate Tournament held? What year? Ultimate Frisbee Tournament. Ultimate Frisbee. Uh, if you know the answer, 361-8557. Or if you want to talk to me about how ridiculous my idea is for Keep density down. and such. Or if you just want to send a text to say that you're listening so that we know that somebody is listening on this No One's Listening show. I don't have anything else written down. Well, I got something. <laughs> you know, I, Something happened to me today, which is it's not the first time. So I just wanted your opinions. Um so I, I frequent Oasis quite a few times during the day or during the week, and they have limited parking. Um, so usually when I go and I see that the parking lot is full, I wait till somebody comes out. So today I had somebody tell me, hey, you know, move forward. And I'm like, where do you want me to go? If I move forward and somebody leaves behind me, you're going to take my spot. Ooh. So do you wait in the beginning and have people back up behind you? Or wait, there's no spots at all. There's no spots. There's no spots. They're all taken. Do you ah, wait? You wait. Do you, you wait, wait and you let guy. people, yeah. you know, file a single line behind you, or do you move forward and let people at least get more into the parking lot? I guess. Yeah. What's the point of them getting into the parking lot if there's no so parking? So my question is, you know, and how you does it affect you? Do, do you do you do what I do, which is wait at the front because yeah. that's what you should do? Uh, but I had a, you know crazy contractor go ballistic on me. This is on the key? So, yeah. yeah, it's out of Oasis. Oh. Imagine the whole parking lot's full. Right. You come in. And you wait on that. And, yeah. and, do you, and you just wait there. Is, some, or is, you some, have is somebody <coughs> getting in their car? You're waiting for somebody to yeah. try, oh, get in their queued, car. Or maybe up. somebody's kind you're of queued queued up. Queued up. And you, so you don't have any prospects on the line here. Mm, you right. got to keep, yeah, you're, you're you keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. Yeah. You got to keep the why. Why does the next guy have to come in? Well, if I mean, it's no, a, it's you just, have no prospects, and he has no prospects. Right, but it's just unless you have a prospect, if somebody actually gets in your car, you can't just sit there and hold up the flow because people are going to pull in, there, even if they don't see it. You know, not everybody's that smart. Yeah, exactly. It's going to back up onto the. If everybody did that, it would just back up onto the street. That's okay. You got you to gotta look, and if you're passing by them, there's no spots. Why are you pulling in there? So I'm waiting. Yeah. You know what I've done. Well, well, so that's my that happened to me today. I mean, so I was curious little, what you guys. There's a little pro tip. I don't know if you guys ever do this. Park it across the street at the church. I do that all the time for Saturday. I mean, I've never had a problem with that. Yeah. The yeah. thing that I'm patient. I have no problem waiting. You know what? Yeah, I don't want to blow that up because I'm sure they will have a problem if too many people do that. But I never, like, I would never pull into that parking lot if it's full of so cars. So you have an Think, opinion. Thinking that like one of those five cars is just about to leave, which they probably are, but. I don't know. That's my take on it. You know what I've done when they don't leave? I'm like waiting, waiting. They're going to leave. They're going to leave. Freak it because I can't say the curse words. I pull up a little bit and I put my yield lights. I leave the car on and I go to get my coffee. And then the person behind me does the same thing and it's not a big deal. And then when someone's leaving, they're like, oh, can you please move your car? And I'm like, yeah, because I already got my coffee. Bye. Thanks. (laughs) And I leave. I just put the yield lights. It's not a big deal. Everybody knows who everybody is. Honestly, on the yeah. key, like the fact that there's no parking at a place is enough for me just not to go there. <laughs> Unless you guys were there, if I drove by and there's no parking, I'd be like, well, I can go home and ride my bike up or something because I don't want to get into like a traffic headache over over, over somewhere that's like a stone store from my house. Anyways, that's what's so nice about the key. You could be riding bike you or walking. You could walk there so, from Key Colony. You know, <laughs> talking about this and the filing in and stuff like that, I've witnessed it a couple times now. It's funny at the times that it happens. Like at midday, the 7-Eleven uh, Harbor Plaza parking lot yes. gets slammed. Slammed. Like where everybody's backed up all the way down to Crandon. To Crandon. Yeah. yeah. And they're all waiting there like idiots. And that's when I go into the – I instantly go into the, uh, church. To the church and I park there. But the way people do it, they're just like – 
I don't know, man. They're like lemmings, like ready to jump off a thing. How can they I all know. stand there like, okay, this is a good idea. Everything's backed up to well, the, majority to of the people aren't even Why would you here? ever go and, inside? And, and yeah. A lot of people aren't even trying to go into the 7-Eleven. They're trying to get down to Harbor, and you're right. backing up the whole thing for yeah. all those people. Oh, that, who, that... These people who stand right there and block the whole thing, are these people are retarded. But, but yeah, they, whoever blocks them. They should be... Um, there should be a cop there to be like, hey, you're... Keep it moving. You, yeah, keep it moving right. or I'm going to ticket you for obstructing but, the road. And that directly goes back to what Griff is talking about in a smaller sense, that you're driving through <laughs> and you don't see a spot open. you got to keep flowing because that is... People are going to be coming through there and it needs to flow. If you're just sitting there all day, that's exactly what happens. But if you're not the one blocking the street, I don't exactly. know if I give you the same... Thing, yeah, like if I'm I mean? inside the parking lot. Oh, you mean like, like the person after, who's after like trying to make the turn? Yeah. I'm after the sidewalk. Right. Uh, next to a bike rack. So I'm in, and they're having me move, and I'm like, no. Yeah. I just think if you don't have a exactly. if you don't have a prospect of a parking spot, you just need to keep the flow. You don't just camp out, especially when there's a lot of heavy traffic. You know, because somebody might have inadvertently pulled in there, and now they're stuck in there, and they don't have any parking either. You just gotta keep. You gotta you keep gotta the keep artery the moving. That's the rule of traffic. It's always you gotta keep it moving, and you got a minute or two. If somebody's pulling out and you see them, all right. But you can't just sit there and wait. Oh, the, by the way, when I do the yield lights, it's because no one's behind me. It's not like there's people behind me. Like there's no one coming. <laughs> and then you get back to your car and they're all pissed off. And you're like, I got, I got. <laughs> I, I, I go to the window. You know, keep an eye. Uh, Man, if you have time for to grab a coffee and you don't have time to wait for a double parker for a second who's, like, literally 10 yeah, feet away exactly. from you, you know, you're going to find the person. That's why. That's why I do it because it's, like, I'm right there. <laughs> I just – the one thing I hate about city life is <laughs> doing something as trivial as looking for a parking spot to do something like get a coffee. I just think it's the most, like – I just feel so dumb when I'm doing that, you know? Yeah. That's what I love about the key. It's like, yeah. just get rid of this hunk of steel that I'm driving around. I'm on the key now. Yeah. And you can walk everywhere and ride a bike. And I don't know. Let's just try to encourage that. It's the whole point. You're right. I know sometimes it's not convenient because you're on your coming back from wherever, you know, but. But if Rafa. Try to work together here. Don't, don't just stop in the middle of nowhere. That's my suggestion. But if Rafa <laughs> gets his way and this becomes a city. <laughs> Be just well, everything will still be close, right? In New York, you don't drive, drive your car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so exactly. Just gotta, you, same. Our our mindset is wrong for the situation we have out here right now. At least this needs a drive through. Like, oh, let me, is what let me you're go saying. down to Seven Eleven. <laughs> let me drive my car. If it's the middle of the day, there'll maybe, be a, if, maybe not. If my know? plan goes to plan, there'll be a Seven Eleven <laughs> right by your house wherever you live. Right. There's right already downstairs. a golden hog. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you, I once parked at 7-Eleven to get a coffee at Oasis, and I got towed. Oh, yeah. That's, that's why you don't Remember the, that? That's why you the don't tennis. That. Bro, yeah. that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. It's like I mean, a booter. Yeah. It's I mean, wrong. It's it, like... Well, getting well, towed is extreme. But yeah. they, they have such a huge parking problem there, and those businesses are vested well, in those parking spots for customers, you know? And they're paying for that. For the it, customers that park in there, it was you know I mean? it was That's the wrong. Way you just gotta kind of look at it. I know, I agree, I, and it was wrong what I did. Let's say, but it took literally tow, less than tow two is minutes. Pretty. I ran there. Holy the shit. tow truck was h- hidden behind the Seven Eleven. I called the cops after being like, "This is effed up. These are all Kibiskane businesses." Da da da, and uh, the cops did do something. I forgot what happened, but it was like illegal what they were doing. There was a tow truck hidden behind the Seven Eleven towing people like that whole day like oh, my yeah. mom got involved it that. was like a thing no it wasn't it no? was no it wasn't it was years ago i forget when it was but it was not during the tennis it was like a new thing they were trying out the managers of the of the whatever that mall is called the 7-eleven mall but uh i got screwed Harbor Plaza. um so talking about that and part well not really parking but oasis you saw they put primer on the. Uh, no, now it's pink. Like it's moving along, right? Yeah, that's it's like a, pink. Yeah, what? it looks like it's moving along. But what are they doing? I didn't see. What's, what do you the, mean? what's the plan? You, you, if you start painting it, I mean, you, you're kind of deciding that things are. Oh, you mean the, re- the rest of the structure doesn't look ready to go? Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah they're painting it right now. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they might have just maybe they're just doing that as a way to keep the village off them, make uh, maybe not look make it look so construction. I don't know, right has a point. What I was worried about is what Carlos told me, which was that they're going to knock down the original Oasis part. That's right. That's horrific. Yeah. And when that happens, all these problems that we just talked about are gone because we're not going to care. <laughs> it's not going to be the same to go inside a place and drink right. a coffee. You yeah, know? Have you seen the steps to get up there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Looks no like ramp a, access. <laughs> looks like a pink elephant. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be sad. I think their their idea is to definitely open that side up and then you know knock down the other demo side, right? the other side. Uh, so I guess we're all curious of what it's gonna look like. That's sad. It is. As long as Lalo's there serving coffee, I don't care. <laughs> I wonder if he'll stay. Oh well, well, I guess we'll see. Might enjoy the air conditioning. Oh, that's true. But if that place has AC, it's not that place. I'm yeah, sorry. right. Like I love the summer when I'm sweaty, sweaty, sweaty in there. It's like <laughs> a thing for me. I like it. Of course. I'm hungover. It's, ex- it's, ex- it's an experience. It's an experience. I yeah. like that experience. But the business doesn't care because the business is gonna do better than ever. Boo. Yeah, maybe they'll accommodate. I mean, that when they wreck down that side, maybe they'll make some very modern equivalent of what it already is, like an outdoorish area. Where you can pick up your coffee. They still have to accommodate all the bikers and everybody that just comes by for a quick coffee. So, I don't know. Could be good. Yeah. It's, it's not all doom and gloom. No, I know. But, I mean, it's going to be different. Yeah. May as well build us a four story condo right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll run out the, the room in the back of the Oasis. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Imagine that waking up, just get the coffee. Boom. <laughs> So, you want to really quick talk about the Frost thing? No. Okay, well, I read something about the Frost thing. What did you read? Well, okay, first of all, guys. <laughs> this is going to be good. This is going to be good. This is uh, the totally off topic. No, Miami Science Museum. It's going up <laughs> on Biscayne where the PAM is. Uh, museum Park. Yeah, the Museum Park. Um, so, they lost funding. They They ran out of money. And they had to be bailed out by the biggest benefactors, the Frosts. And so I was reading today, or yesterday, that the Frosts actually withheld money um, while all this was happening, kind of watching what was going on. Um, and then when they saw it all kind of, kind of going downhill, they decided that they would bail it out on their terms of firing the whole, the whole board, board, which is like 40 <laughs> wow. people, which is yeah. another thing. And it's like a bunch of influential people in Miami and all this stuff. And apparently they, they had a meeting and they were just like handed these these papers that said like, you are going to say that you're resigning right now and you're all out. You know? hmm. If you're going to take this money because you need it because you guys are all out of money because you... Suck at fundraising. I'm joking. Ex- but, well, yeah, basically. Basically. <laughs> But then what came out was this. So the Frost demanded all this stuff before putting up their money. But right now, the biggest money contributor is the Knight Foundation. Because even though the Frost have, had committed like a $10 million thing, they never actually paid the $10 million. They just committed themselves to paying the $10 million. And because they didn't pay that $10 million... Well, they ran out of money faster than they expected, expected to run out of money. Because their budget had yeah. included that. So anyway, these guys are going to bail them out, but not really. They're only bailing them out to operate for a couple months or whatever. It's not all the money that's yeah. going to take to do the thing. And I just thought it was, I mean, it would have made more sense if you had mentioned it. Then I could give my other uh, Sorry. <laughs> insight into the situation. But yeah, so that, that whole mess is just a mess. It's a mess. So, that's it on the Miami Science Museum. Since you brought it up, <laughs> there was one thing that one more thing that I was going to talk about last week, but I didn't because the show was messy. <laughs> um, there was no time. <clears throat> we always I like to bring up places that are going to be torn down in Miami, just so everybody's aware. And it was it was announced last week, so a lot of people probably already know. I don't know if you've been to SNS Diner. Has anyone ever? Oh, gone? is that getting torn down? Allen's Drugs. No. Yeah, that's yeah, the same place. Oh, there's an SNS yeah. tri- diner. There's another one. Yeah. Because I saw. Well, I want, oh, you're not talking about the one on Bird and uh, Red? No. The oh, because they one... had their their sign down. And yeah, else. they sold. Oh, they they're, did. Yeah, they're out of there. Oh wow. Well, oh really? That hurts. Yeah. That, oh, so that's that part hurts. of the whole thing. That hurts big time. Well, S- the other SNS is on Fudge Northwest Second and Seventeenth, I'd say. Near that budget Ace Hardware, near that's, the Brayman. That's sad. I actually I went sad. there a month ago. Yeah. Uh, the food was not good. But, but that's the been there ambiance, since like 1938, I think it is. The ambiance is very cool. Uh, it looks like it was being run by two 
two women, like a daughter and and, and mom type of thing. Uh, but the the food was was not I great. I think it was the first diner in Miami, or something like that. I'm gonna look it up right now. Um, because whatever the point is that they they sold to like some like Uruguayan real estate developer and they're gonna build a condo there, like 50 floors up, like one of those things. But um. Yeah, that's sad. It's one more one more place to go mm. in that area. Is it down already? Is it dead? No, it's not dead no, yet. It's, not. it's gonna be soon though. It opened in 1938. Okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. And no, to see feels, like a structure like it that. It feels like that inside. It has a, it has a real nice mm. um, diner I, feel. But it's not good. The food wasn't good at all. No. I'd rather go to Dona Gallery. What about the diner where you lived by your old house on 72nd Street? Um, that is really good. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. That, it's a diner off of uh, 73rd in Biscayne. It's uh, the East Side Diner. Uh, you want really good hash browns, just go over there. <laughs> uh, just, it's, a, it's a good diner. It's, you know, I think it's owned by a, a bunch of Greeks, and Greeks do diners really well. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I guess in other Miami stuff, I saw that the ICA has a cool exhibition right now. Did you see that? John Miller? Yeah. John Miller has really cool work. I The setup looked worked, cool in the pictures. I haven't gone yet. When I worked at the Rubels, they had a lot of his work, and they dedicated like a whole gallery space in their first floor to them. And if anybody ever went to visit me, I gave tours. <laughs> and uh, I got to meet John Miller and talk to him about his work. Um, to, and I in- included all of that info into my tour. So cool. if anyone wants to go with me to the ICA, I'll be able to talk about his work pretty well. Cool. So cool check stuff. that out. Yeah. And I guess I'm pretty quiet in here. I mean, I don't. I'm trying to think of other things that I've heard about, but I really haven't. So, well, uh, we ready for the answer to the trivia? Yeah. Yes. Good idea. Wait. Three zero five three six one eight five five seven. Pose the question one more time. I know Santi was texting me, and he didn't. He didn't even come up with anything. But the question (laughs) was, which, (laughs) what, in what year are we of the Key Rat Ultimate Tournament? Ultimate Frisbee Tournament. Which number tournament will this be? So year yeah. or or which year? It's been going on for a certain amount of years. Which annual? And what year does it start? Let's put it that way. There you go. And we're waiting, we're waiting on all the listeners. Santi's name is on the What do we have for a prize? Time. Yeah, it is. I think a prize should be a, a free trip to the studio. To that's a good out, idea. Right? That's a good. That's a good I one. thought you were gonna say a free frisbee. Oh, sure. We'll throw in a frisbee, too. <laughs> and a beer. Going to have tons of those. All right. Time All right. So, the first uh, Key Rat Ultimate Tournament was in 2011, and it was not held in the summer. It was held, It started in October, somewhere around there, because it was a, it was a way of <clears throat> trying to keep the summer, because we'd always play during the summer, and then everybody would go away to college. And it was my way of trying to keep the frisbee going in, into the winter. And so that's why I put on the tournament, trying to keep people around and interested and then after that year, we played all at Crandon. The field was terrible. Didn't even have team names. It was just Team 1, Team 2. <laughs> and we had a good time, but after that, we did them all in the summer, and the rest is history. That was so, back in my heyday when I used to play and everything. That's right. Rafa was a Rafa stud played. out there. Stud. He's missed. He's greatly missed. I hope he picks it back up again. Well, I guess that's the show. Thank you for tuning in or downloading. We'll see you next week. How can we sign off, Gannon? You always have a creative. Day. <laughs> right. I was thinking of that. I, I really just like the group sign off. Right, yeah. I like it too. When I, I when I hear it on the radio, it's it's a nice segue into yeah. whatever uh, <laughs> overplayed music we have that comes on afterwards. Yeah. Not, oh, just so kidding. Not, I'm not enjoy, like, I, yeah. I've really been enjoying the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now just kidding. Suggested by Gannon. No, I like the familiarity. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've I've been listening to it religiously, and I told you I actually Googled some of the the songs that I've been hearing over and over again because I didn't know what they were. Oh, oh yeah, I want to hear these. <laughs> you want to hear them now? Yeah, yeah just say them. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's see. Right. The one that I've always heard, and I just like God, get this song off is by Blur. It's called Best Days. Okay. <laughs> I'm sick of that song. The other one is Knock Me Down, which I didn't realize was Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay. I don't really enjoy that one. It's just very repetitive and yeah. I don't know, but that's I think that's the real problem with songs on the radio is when they're very repetitive. Because I can listen to, um, heard it through the grapevine every day. Like that thing, it just right, it just flows. It's good on the radio. 
Uh, all right, the specials too much too young. Oh, that's a good one. That's that's a good good one. one. <laughs> <laughs> These are your guys' recommendations from last week or something, probably. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. I enjoy it. It's just after a while, it kind of wears on you. And okay. then this one, I don't think I'm a real fan of the artists in general. It's Parquet Quartz, uh, <gasps> Light Up Gold, okay, and Stoned and Starving. It kind of sounds like Johnny Cash ish, like Joaquin Phoenix is Johnny Cash. That's what it kind of sounds like to me. <laughs> all right. Do you don't see that the way? It's, it's rough. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, I can see that. Um, um, anyways, it's not bad necessarily. It's just I've heard it so many times. And yeah, I feel. How does it? That's a song that I only. Those two songs I might have put on like three weeks ago, and it feels like they play all the time now. It's the damn. Uh, I know our software is bogus. software <laughs> that, that like seems to play them at the same exact times of the day. Yeah, this is what happens because today, I got to the show at the same, pretty much at the same time that I went with Griff to the grassroots the other day. Right. And the exact same three songs that we listened to going to the way that Grassroots played when I was leaving well, my house to come here. And so you're probably on a set schedule leaving your house. Yeah. And that's right. when you hear the exact same over songs. Over and over and over. Playing it over and okay. over. Okay. Yeah. And so that's, I would say I have a solution. A I mean, if we can talk about a post radio show, it's not very li- interesting to listeners, but I think there is a way to mix it up a little bit by using the same software. Yeah, so. yeah. No, if I mess with it every time I come out here, yeah, other ways too. Yeah. But uh, any, in general, I think it's pretty good, and we always welcome recommendations from the listeners. <laughs> I hope there's somebody out there. I mean, <laughs> can someone send us a text, please? <laughs> I'm, I'm almost at the point text, where it's. Right? I think it's time to promote 101.1. You said, say, I think we just go bust at this point, man, <laughs> because, you know, how long are we going to be radio? Uh, you, wait, you, said some, you said Santi sent you a text <laughs> Yeah, and he was listening? Yeah, he said, what did he say? He said, the man with the logic today. He was talking about uh, me. I said, all right. Uh, so I have a fan. Do you guys have a fan? <laughs> oh, man. No. <laughs> okay, so th- there you go. Okay, so somebody was listening. You're that's right, good. You're right, you're that's right. good. Thanks, Santi. Um, okay, so that's the show on three. Ready? One, two, three. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.